Russian military propagandist Maxim Kalashnikov reported that Russian soldiers who recorded an appeal with complaints about their command and claimed that they allegedly wanted to zero them were ultimately shot by their own commanders. Z Blogger published a message in which he reported details of what happened at the front. On October the 21st, information appeared that an assault unit of the 19th Tank Regiment of the Russian Armed Forces had taken up all-round defense and recorded a video message in which they accused their own command of intending to eliminate the entire combat group. According to them, the practice of execution has become widespread in the Russian army. This is how they deal with those who refuse to go on meat assaults. In the end, that's exactly what happened. Only one Russian soldier survived and he was thrown into the pit as punishment. The guys were put in a pit and only one survived. One of all those in the video. They were reset by order of the commander of the 67th Division of 25A. One of the Russian Z bloggers is indignant. Recall Russian commanders are said to be sending troops on deadly meat grinder assaults in Ukraine as punishment for showing dissent. The tactic is being used to silence personnel who become disgruntled and means almost certain and very rapid death, according to a media outlet which has been using open sources to monitor the Kremlin's losses. More than 71,000 Russian military personnel have died in the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, according to analysis by Mediozana, BBC News Russian Service, and volunteers. As the combined research uses a process of verification, the real toll is likely to be much higher. Prisoners were the largest category of war losses by March 2023, before the numbers dropped after Russian forces captured Bakhmut. By September 2024, volunteers once again emerged as the largest category among the killed in action. The researchers attributed this to waning prison recruitment and no new mobilization at that point. UK military intelligence claims September was the deadliest month for the Russian army since the start of the war in Ukraine. But crucially for Moscow, the massive casualties have neither provoked significant public discontent within Russian society nor discouraged potential new recruits. According to Western assessments, Russian casualties in the war so far tally up to 115,000 killed and 500,000 wounded. Russia may use its most dangerous weapons if NATO troops are deployed in Ukraine, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko told the Rossiya, One TV channel. If the West wants to bring NATO troops to Ukraine, it will be a completely different war. Then Russian servicemen will be able to take the most dangerous weapons out of their warehouses, he said. Lukashenko said that Kiev's hoaxes about the North Korean forces fighting on Russia's side could be used as a pretext for an introduction of NATO troops to Ukraine. I don't believe in the participation of North Korean forces in the conflict. Most importantly, that would be a pretext to openly introduce NATO forces at a full scale to Ukraine. Because understands that Volodya Zelensky is exhausted. There are no people to keep fighting. And admitting defeat would be totally unacceptable, he said. This concerns me in regards to whether, the West, plans to send someone from the other side, if not Koreans, then Poles, or the French, from Volodya Zelensky. So these conversations should be treated very seriously and should be followed. Lukashenko underscored that mercenaries from NATO countries, financed by governments of NATO member states, have long been fighting in Ukraine. According to Lukashenko Russian President Vladimir Putin calculates all options regarding the possible escalation scenarios of the conflict in Ukraine, including the involvement of allied countries and NATO troops. Alexander Lukashenko said that the appearance of armed forces of another country, even Belarus, on the line of contact will be a step towards escalation of the conflict. It would be a step toward some escalation of the conflict if someone's armed forces, even Belarus were deployed at the contact line. Even if we got involved in the war, it would be a way towards escalation. Because you, Anglo-Saxons, would say right away that since an allied state is now involved in the conflict, then NATO has the right to help Ukraine. 
which means NATO troops would be deployed in Ukraine. Is the variant possible? It is. Putin keeps the option in mind as well. Whether he needs it or not, Lukashenko added. He said that Belarus intends to support Russia as long as necessary, as the two countries are allies. Russia is our ally. I have supported Russia and will support it as much as it needs, the Belarusian leader said. North Korean troops disguised as Bariats and Yakuts have been sent to help Russia retake the Kursk region, which has been partly held by Ukrainian forces since August, according to video footage released by South Korea's intelligence service, the Financial Times reports. Ukrainian analysts say the force is likely too small to turn the tide of the war, with Russia needing to double its 50,000 troops in the Kursk region to dislodge the Ukrainian military and launch a new wave of mobilization to make gains along the front lines in Ukraine. At the same time, Jack Waddling, a senior research fellow in land warfare at the Royal United Services Institute in the UK, believes that North Korea's ability to help Russia replenish its troops could create even more difficulties for Ukraine. They may have good enough cohesion. They may have enough morale. They may be able to operate on the scale that the Russians are trying to achieve. That's a low enough bar to be better than the Russians are now, the expert emphasized. The Financial Times noted that North Korean troops are reinforcing the Russian army at a time when Russia is trying to increase its forces due to huge losses in Ukraine. According to Western officials, they amount to more than 600,000 killed and wounded. Western intelligence also has information that Russian dictator Vladimir Putin has not heeded requests from his top leadership to order a new wave of mobilization. Waddling noted that while Russia may face command and control issues with North Korean forces, its experience of operating with Iranian-backed forces and militias in the Syrian civil war will give Moscow's commanders a clear model to draw on. In turn, the National Intelligence Service of South Korea reports that the troops being sent to Russia belong to the 11th Army of the North Korea, an elite unit called the Storm Corps. These are not ordinary North Korean soldiers, most of whom have never had proper combat training. They are well-equipped, highly trained mobile light infantry, said Go Myung Hyun, a senior researcher at the South Korean state-run Institute for National Security Strategy in Seoul. At the same time, the Financial Times emphasizes that the North Korean troops will arrive at a time when Russia has pushed back the Ukrainian defense forces in the Kursk region, reducing the territory it holds to 600 to 700 square km in October from about 1,000 square km at the end of August. Waddling also added that Russia's goal is to put Ukraine in a situation where holding the entire front line would be impossible, since the occupiers would be putting pressure on the Ukrainian military at several different points along the front line at once. Ukraine constantly pays for the maintenance of this territory in the Kursk region, he said.